hey guys it's Emily at Silver Miss Crafts today I'm going to be showing you how I clean my wood mounted stamps I recently purchased a bunch of these from marketplace but they are extremely dirty um, it looks like they've been stored in somebody's garage and I haven't even actually gone through to see what I've got yet the first thing I wanted to do before testing them was to clean them all up so that's the process video that I wanted to show you today the ones on the right here are ones that I've already cleaned. I tried out a couple of different techniques, but the one I'll be showing you is what worked for me. And although they're not going to get completely clean, because it looks like some mixed media work has been used with them, and they've also been used with paints, at least I know that they will be safe for me to use and I won't get any paint or ink residue on my project. Alright, so the first way that I tried before I found out what the best technique for me was is I have a bunch of different stamp cleaning materials. You're probably familiar with a lot of them and I gave all of these a try before I worked out what works best. So firstly, I thought I would try my... Stampin' Up! Stampin' Scrub. This is really great for heavy duty stamps because you can rub the stamp on one side and then dry it off on the other. But with this, I found that it wasn't really cleaning them out very well. It was leaving black residue on the stamp and I was also using a lot of my stamp cleaner. And this stuff isn't really cheap. So I have so many stamps to do. It'd be great for a small quantity of stamps but something so large I don't really want to be wasting all of my supplies so I kind of abandoned that idea. So in conjunction with that Stampin' Up! Stampin' Scrub I've also used these aloe vera wipes. Um, they're just the same as baby wipes but I think they're a bit stronger. And these do actually work really well but once again I don't have a huge supply of these wipes and I very rarely use them so I don't really want to waste them. But for once again, small quantity of stamps, they also do a really great job at cleaning. So I then tried this close to my heart stamp scrubber and you pretty much just rub the stamp surface across that um, after spraying some stamp cleaner on top and that gives them a really deep clean. So this actually worked really well as well. It was probably the best method out of everything that I've shown you so far. But once again, I was spraying it with that stamp cleaner. So I would be wasting a lot of stamp cleaner and you pretty much need to spray it every one to two times that you rub a stamp across it. So I, I don't want to be wasting my stamp cleaner. Um, that stuff isn't really cheap so I kind of scrapped that idea and along with those supplies I've also used some paper towel to kind of stamp off the ink that I've just cleaned and that clears up some of the residue on the stamp and I also found that I needed to use these tweezers a little bit when the stamp was extremely dirty and there were bits of grass or some other type of fiber on the stamp that I needed to pick off that the stamp cleaning just would not clear up so yeah I also used those the thing with these is that the tip is that sharp that it can damage the rubber stamp so the final technique that I discovered that works really well um, it's very efficient and it doesn't waste any of my supplies and that is good old soapy water with dishwashing liquid a grout cleaning brush for really kind of stubborn inbuilt paint stains or something that needs a deep clean it's got very stiff strong bristles and good old used toothbrush I'm so glad I was able to find an old toothbrush I thought I threw them all out but this is literally the perfect tool for cleaning wood mounted rubber stamps that are extremely dirty probably wouldn't use them on new stamps to clean off basic ink but it's a really great to clear off those stubborn larger fibers and materials that get stuck to wood mounted stamps sometimes and also some fresh clean water and a large microfiber cloth oh and how can i forget my ipad i definitely need some entertainment while i'm doing this because I have a feeling I'll be sitting in this chair pretty much all weekend. Alright, so here's a stamp. It's 
very dusty, dirty. It's got some ink residue. I can see some fluff on it as well. Um, other than that, it seems to be in pretty good condition. Structurally, there's nothing wrong with it. So it just needs a really good clean. So firstly, I just pop it in the water, use the toothbrush straight away and start rubbing the underside of the stamp. And I don't do it too deeply. Just pretty much make sure the bristles get into every little gap. And then I've been giving it a brush around the edges and the sides. And water's flicking up everywhere as well. So that's why I'm kind of holding the head of it so water doesn't flick up as much. Okay, and then when I'm happy with that and I've given it a really good scrub, I will just rinse it in my fresh clean water and dry it with the microfiber cloth. It does have to be microfiber, otherwise dust and particles will stick to it, which is not what you want. And there's the clean stamp. It looks so much cleaner. It does still have some ink residue on it, but that's always going to happen when you've got permanent inks. You can't get everything off. But I can see here, just tipping it up to the light, I can see that the surface is completely clean and I would be very comfortable in using that, feeling like I'm not going to pick up anything or get my hands dirty when I use that. So really happy with how that one came out. I'll go through a couple more and then I'll speed this up so you can have a look at how I do it quickly. The reason why you wouldn't do this on new wooden stamps is because it can damage the rubber on the front of it. That's with repeated, repeated cleaning, you don't want to do that. Now that one didn't really take long, it was already pretty clean, so I just pretty much removed a layer of dust. Give it a quick dry, and that's completely clean. Perfect. That seems like a good quality one there. And here's a bit of a different coloured one. I think that's just because of the paint on it. So you can see there it's pretty dirty on the sides are really dirty. It's got some fluff, dust, all of that fun stuff on it. So firstly I'm going to try with the toothbrush, clean up it as much as that surface dirt as I can. Give the sides a really good scrub. Hopefully my toothbrush bristles don't fall out by the time I'm through with all of this. And that's pretty clean. Let's see if I can get anything off with the grout brush. No, not really. I think that's pretty much everything that's going to move off that stamp. I don't want to scrub too hard with the grout brush either because that can damage the rubber too. Rinse it off in some cold water. Give it a good dry. And there's that one. It feels completely clean. Obviously the paint is going to stay on there if it's a permanent paint. Perfectly fine for using though. Okay, so I'm going to get to it guys and start cleaning these stamps. I've got so many to go through. So if you decide to stick with me for a while, I hope you guys enjoy having a look at a couple of the little stamps I got and watching me clean. Otherwise, I'll see you when I've finished and give you some updates. Thanks guys. Bye.
Hey you guys, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on the progress of my stamp cleaning. Um, these are the ones that I've cleaned. I've also got some punches that I've cleaned as well and I've cleaned the ink containers but I haven't actually tried them yet. So the technique works really well with the toothbrush warm water and the cloth, the microfiber cloth. Must be microfiber. If you use a paper towel, all of that lint and fiber will transfer onto your stamp which will make your image furry and it won't really give a crisp image so it definitely has to be a microfiber cloth. So the toothbrush method works really well. Um, it's definitely cleaned up this the rubber of the stamps really well and also the wood on them. Um, the stamps smell a lot fresher now. Um, they don't have any dust residue. All of the ink is pretty much cleaned off it. Um, there are some stubborn stains of paint which I couldn't get off. I didn't want to rub those stamps too hard. Um, but yeah, they, it was a really good job and they look really nice and clean now. In the first crate, um, which is what I've just finished cleaning last weekend, um, there were a couple of these stamps and I'm not sure if they're vintage. I think they might be because of the type of rubber that's used on the bottom of them. And what I found out with these that I have to remember for the next few crates is that the picture of the stamp on top that should be displayed isn't actually underneath the plastic coating. So if you scrub that with a toothbrush, it's going to come off like it did with these. So when you're cleaning stamps with this type of backing, you definitely need to be careful of the image on top and making sure that you don't actually scrub it off but the actual um, rubber of the stamp itself seems to have come up pretty good. So I'm looking forward to trialing those out. I haven't actually inked with them yet, so that will be fun to experiment. And another little tip I wanted to mention before I continue is that it's a great idea to wear old clothes or possibly an apron, something that you're not worried about getting wet or having a bit of ink transfer on because the toothbrush, when you're scrubbing the stamp, you'll definitely get a lot of kickback onto your clothes. And also as well, your fingers get really wrinkly after being in water for so long. But yeah, that's not too much to worry about. So I will now get on to the next few crates. I'll see how much I can handle today. And I hope you're getting some really good tips from this. So I finally finished cleaning my stamps, guys. It took me about three days and even insides of your sleeves will get extremely wet so you might want to wear something that's short sleeved. I'm glad that's finally over now and I can start having some fun with some of these stamps. Um, along with some animal and kind of like modern designs I did also find some vintage stamps. So this is one of them for example of a sewing machine and that's the rubber part on the back it's really firm. I haven't even tested this to see if it works properly, but I'm really looking forward to trialing that and seeing what it actually turns out like on paper. And there's a marking here. It says, I think it says Fiddle Ricks 1995. So yeah, that's probably one of the oldest that I've found in this lot. Um, plus there's a few other vintage stamps that I'd like to show you. So I'll just select a few and we can trial out some of these gold and silver inks that I also got and see how juicy they are and if they work well with the stamps. Okay, so I've got my little stamping station set up here and I'm looking forward to stamping these wood stamps to see how well they work. And I'm really looking forward to stamping these vintage ones actually. The earliest stamp that I could find was from 1994 and then there's a few others from 1995. So I might start with these actually and see how they work. I'm using some VersaFine ink. Um, I do have these metallic ink pads to try but the VersaFine always gives a really good image and it's a good indication of the type of quality that the stamp is in. So that's why I want to stamp with the VersaFine. That feels to be inking up the rubber pretty good actually. 
So I've just got my little foam mat here which helps with giving a good impression. Okay. So if you can tell here, the lines are extremely thin on that stamp. I'm guessing that is part of the design because the ridges on this rubber are raised up really high and they are very thin so it's going to turn out to be a thin stamped image. I don't actually have any stamps that imprint that thin around the line so that one would be really good to colour in actually. Okay so that vintage stamp is a winner. Let's give this one a shot. This was the earliest one I could find, 1994. And this has actually got a solid rubber backing so this will be a lot more solid on the page. Okay, that's given a really good impression. I'm happy with that vintage stamp. It's held up really good over the years. And off screen, I forgot I had this one I wanted to try out. That's the sewing machine. And this has got a hard rubber base. So I'd really like to see how this comes out. I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on the wood because they are old so the rub is quite firm on them. Alright, so that's got more of a like distressed look to it. It's still good, it kind of makes it look really vintage, so I like that one as well. Okay, the last vintage stamp that I'll be trialling today is this Eagle. And that has a really similar texture to the sewing machine so once again it's got that vintage feel to it you can't really see a lot of definition but I guess that's what you get with older stamps okay so now that the vintage stamps are done I'll try a couple of others in the metallic inks so we can try all the metallic inks at the same time and I'll give this guy a shot Okay, it's inking up pretty good. Yep, I can kind of tell that that's going to give a pretty good impression. Sometimes with these older wooden stamps, it's a good idea to stand up off your seat, just so you can add a bit of extra pressure onto the back. Alright, so... It gave a good impression, but it's not really dark. So to me, that shows that this ink pad is almost out of ink. So I probably won't be keeping that one. Okay, so for the next stamp image, I think I want to try this one. That was the one how it was a bit smooth on partial of the rubber. So I want to see if that does make an impression or if it just looks like a black blob. And I'll trial a metallic. This one is a teal colour. That's actually going on really well. And you can kind of see a bit better where that line comes across the image. Kind of shows that it's a bit melted. Be nice if this one works because it is a lovely looking stamp. Okay, so it's partially worked. You can see where that line comes across here. So 
yeah not a hundred percent not sure about this one I'll have to decide what I want to do with that stamp the ink pad turned out really well though I love that shimmery teal color okay next up I want to try this tiny little stamp this is definitely a cheapie but it looks like a planet and I love kind of space themed stamps so I want to try this and see if this works and we'll use the silver ink pad doesn't feel a hundred percent juicy but let's see oh gosh yeah that hardly even stamped at all I might try this with the black Versafine should have really wiped that off but that's okay I can wipe off the pad a bit later all right that's a lot better it's still not completely dark but you can definitely see it a lot better than the silver over there okay now I would really like to try this stamp I thought it was pretty cool because it's specific to a place this is the Key West light Florida and this is made in 1999 so let's give that one a shot looks pretty good on the back um, doesn't really look distorted so let's see what type of impression that gives and we will use the honeydew metallic ink and see if that works well going on pretty smoothly and it feels a bit sticky which is kind of a good sign stand up for this one and see if I can get a good impression on it If you've got newer type stamps you definitely do not need to stand up it's just that these are really old and the rubber on them has kind of dried out and is pretty firm oh wow yep I love that that's given an amazing image the green actually looks really nice with this stamp So that's definitely one of my favorites so far. Okay, so to finish off the stamping, I will try this little kitty. I'm not sure I'll give that one a shot. I can see that that's pretty new on the back, so I'm confident that that would give a good impression. Um, yeah, this kitty, it's kind of old. It feels firm at the back, but it's a really cute image, so I really hope this one works well. And for this, I will use the VersaFine Black. After I finish this kitty, I'll show you a couple of cards that I've made using these wood stamps. Hopefully that can give you some inspiration. Okay, the big reveal and all right so maybe if I had have pressed it a bit more firmer stood up and pressed that might have given a better image so I might try that to see if it really does make a difference okay so this is standing up let's see if that stamps any better no it hasn't really so I've missed a bit of the ears up there I probably didn't put enough pressure up the top 
but the mouse has come out pretty cute. I think if we just lined up a couple of those lines with a sharpie um, and kind of filled in the gaps, that would look really cute. Okay, so I've made a couple of cards with these bunches of stamps here. So firstly, I'll show you the stamps. That one is an animal footprint stamp and it's got a whole different range of footprints on the side. That is a Christmas greeting stamp. This is a cheetah. That one was my favorite actually. It's really cool. I love the image of that. This is really cute Christmas reindeer. And just a sentiment stamp. Oh yeah, this one I actually trialed out because if you can see on the back, a lot of it has been melted. So I was hoping it would work, but unfortunately only the bottom part works. So that unfortunately will have to go in the bin, even though it is a beautiful cover for the stamp there. And these two angel stamps, I found that that's a duplicate. This is the one that I used. It's kind of been a bit more worn and that one is looking pretty pretty good condition. So I'll probably keep this one for myself and either gift or sell that one. But here's a couple of the cards that I made from them. And this is the cheetah card that I made. I just inked up, image stamped it, embossed it with that VersaFine and coloured it in with marker and that one turned out really well it's probably my favourite and then this is the angel stamp that I used that gave a really good impression and it's a great easy way for a quick card I just ink blended the background stamped it in black on top and then added a sentiment and the last one was this reindeer and the greetings stamp and I pretty much just coloured and I just stamped on the image with this VersaFine ink. And if you can have a look here, I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but where his legs are, it's there's kind of like an indentation. So a little section of his legs didn't come out properly. So I just filled that in with Sharpie marker. And you can't even tell the difference. I was pretty heavy handed on the legs here. You can see it's darker than the rest of the image but that's because I was so self-conscious of the legs not coming out correctly. So I put a bit of extra pressure on the legs, which made them thicker. And then I just colored him in and I put some glitter around his neck for the wreath. And so that is the end of the video, guys. I hope you've learned something. I hope you found it entertaining. If you're interested in any of the stamps, please let me know. Or if you have any further cleaning ideas or ideas on how we can utilize these wooden stamps, please leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!